Hello, people of YouTube. In this video, I'm gonna give you a quick tutorial on how you can do zombie makeup one of two ways. If you happen to catch my zombie snowboarding at Arapaho Basin for Halloween, then this is going to show you sort of the back end on how I created that look. First things first, you don't want your zombie to just be wearing regular clothes and you want to put a little thought into your clothes and the easiest way to do that is to go to Goodwill or a thrift store and pick up some old clothes that you can destroy. So for this Halloween, I knew I was going to be on limited time and I didn't really want to spend a ton of money. First, we're going to tatter our clothes because the zombie has been, you know, keep in mind, this isn't for any kind of movie production. This is for fun. It doesn't have to be perfect. I've got 80 grit sandpaper in the sander. It's an orbital sander, so we'll see how this works. An orbital sander is not the way to do this. We're starting to tatter up the bottom. You don't want to leave the seams of the bottom perfect. So just take your razor blade and cut it in a whole lot of different directions like this. This is one of the easier ways to just tatter up your clothes. And then the real fun comes blood and paint. And if you can't tell in the video, I'm not actually cutting on the carpet. I have a carpet slab on top of the carpet and I'm always being careful not to cut towards my fingers because safety first. Ah, God. You see what I mean? <laughs> You gotta be careful! No, I'm, I'm kidding, it's fake blood. When making all these cuts, don't just go up and down. You're gonna need to go side to side, angle all around. Also, if you feel safer, you can get a box cutter instead of using a straight razor blade like this. This is just regular over-the-counter uh, Halloween blood that you can get at pretty much any Halloween store. I will put links to all the things I'm using in the description below. We're just sort of pouring it out and using some paper towels to blot it to get shapes that look like something we want to get. So your shapes and your patterns are going to be different than mine and that's okay. This is a slow drying product so you might want to throw it in the dryer when you're done. Inside the shirt you can put something between the layers if you don't want the same pattern on the back as what you get on the front, a piece of cardboard or anything like that will work just fine. What I'm doing now is using an airbrush with a little bit of House of Color candy paint. Yeah, that's an automotive paint, you're right. It's not something that you have to do. What I like to do is use it to darken up an area of the blood to give it more of a, a wet, really deep look because that's what candy paints sort of do. If you're not an airbrush guy and you can't use an airbrush, you can also go and you can buy the Maron Thick Scab Blood, which is linked in the description below. If you're trick-or-treating or going out somewhere to a Halloween contest, slabber the blood on. Have it wet, have it shiny. This is more of a trick to do it in a way that it looks wet, it looks bloody, it looks nasty and shiny, yet it's actually dry. I'm going snowboarding, I can't be getting blood and goop all over all my stuff, so that's why I'm going this route. One thing I'm hoping to do is put a little blood pocket into this pocket. We're gonna go ahead and put some blood on it now. If you have someone to help you and you can go outside like in the backyard, you can just sort of douse it down. Make sure to really get the tattered areas covered pretty good because when you start adding this kind of blood to them, they really get matty and it really helps with the, uh, the whole look. Before starting your actual makeup, you might want to put on your clothes. Putting them on over your makeup really sucks. And at this point, it's a lot easier to see where you might need to add more blood like on the tie here. These are the kind of adjustments and things you can tweak as you're putting it all together. First, we're gonna use silicone for all the moving areas like through my neck and things like that. This is a two-part tutorial with latex and silicone. We'll have links in the description. There's a nice kit you can buy that pretty much 
tells you how to do the silicone. It's really easy, but I'm gonna go over it real quick with you here too. Remember to get your stuff from the description below because everything I'm using, you'll be able to find down there. Silicone is a two-part process, the part A and the part B. You just wanna mix them equally. I usually just use some tongue depressors, a couple of clear plastic cups, and then I try to remember to not mix that stick into the part B because then it'll start messing with your mixture, solidifying and doing things you don't want it to do. You let it settle and then see if you need more in one cup than the other. It doesn't have to be 100% exact, but it does need to be very close. We're gonna basically use some blood in one and then we're gonna do another that's more skin tone. Keep in mind you are gonna be doing makeup over this to help blend the edges. Mix it in thoroughly and then you're gonna pour that colored one into your clear one. This is a nice way to make sure that you're actually blending them together all the way. You wanna mix it and then you're gonna go back to the original cup, and mix it and go back to the other cup. You might notice that I left the original sticks out on the cups with material in it. That's because I know I'm gonna be doing more than just red. So why waste a bunch of sticks when I can just use those same two again and again? Just make sure you keep the part A stick with the part A and the part B with the part B. Now you get about a 20 to 30 minute window before this stuff dries. So at that point you need to get ready and figure out where you're gonna put it. You can add some thickening agent. Just a couple of drops is all you need. And that's gonna make your whole product just get gummier and thicker. So you're gonna use your tongue depressor pretty much to spread the silicone on. And you're really just gonna do it where you want some holes like right here. It's gonna look sort of like a bite mark, kind of. The silicone isn't as big of a deal if it gets in hair. It usually will pull out of the hair, no problem, whenever it's all dried and taking it off. I'm gonna use this instead of fake blood to sort of blend my, my shirt line to make it show that that's why my shirt's all bloody. It almost feels like you're just sort of spreading peanut butter around on your skin. And the reason you put the blood on first is because you really want to cover some of the, the edges of the blood with skin tones to build it up to make it look thicker, to make it look like it's sunk back in there so it's 3D and raised. If you just put the blood on last, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense when it's all done. As it's starting to dry, it becomes actually a little easier to work with too. So with silicone, you can go right over an eyebrow if you want to. It will pull out later. With latex, you don't want to go right on your eyebrow like that. And there's our first coat. When you mix up your flesh tone of silicone, don't goober a whole lot of tint into it like you did with the blood. You want it to be sort of translucent. That way when you're going over things, you can still make out some of the darker colors of the blood, as well if you add veins or anything like that underneath, you can still see that. Now later again, we're gonna be adding some makeup to help change the look of this. It's all done, and it won't be so shiny then either. Again, it's really important to make sure you're blending the edges down. Now we let it dry and then we get the shine out. After the shine is out, we're gonna do a little latex on this side, just a little bit so you can get a taste of how easy that is. And then we're gonna put some makeup on it to get rid of the rest of the shine, as well as to sink everything back and make it look not just like I've got a bunch of peanut butter in my face. Now we're gonna just use some latex, cotton balls, and tissue paper, whether it be uh, for blowing your nose or wiping your butt, those work great. But you don't want patterns and pictures on whatever you're doing because they will show through to some degree. Undo your cotton and make the shape that you want. You could uh, make a rip across your mouth. I mean, there's all kinds of things you could do. We're just taking some store-bought latex from any Halloween store, which I'll have linked below, and mixing it with the cotton. I like to put a little bit of latex down on the face first. Use it as a glue to hold the cotton in place. We're gonna just sort of thicken up the cheekbone just a little bit here. Just apply the cotton on top of it. And then just slather a ton of latex on top of that. 
And you can do this all over the place on your arms, on any, anywhere, but don't do it on top of hair. You don't want to use a good paintbrush for this. You want to use some cheapy paintbrushes you can get like in bulk. And sort of the same thing, once you get it going, you'll notice that you can come back in and smooth the edges back into your, your actual face. Old cotton balls and latex and toilet paper and latex. Man, you can get some really cool looks with that. Another thing you can do is leave little stringers hanging down everywhere. If you're airbrushing, those are great. If you're using hand makeup with brushes and sponges, those are a little harder to paint later. For today, this is all we're doing. We're sort of in a hurry, running out of time. Gotta get this dry, gotta get painted, gotta get to the mountain. We've got a mixture of baby powder and cornstarch. It absorbs the moisture, and baby powder helps get rid of the sticky or the shine. Now for the rest of this, I'm gonna be using an airbrush and Maron airbrushable liquid makeup. If you don't already know how to use an airbrush, I would definitely recommend sponges and paint brushes with makeup like this, this, and so forth. All these things are linked in the description below. Use the one that fits your needs best. So if you're gonna be airbrushing yourself, you wanna find like your natural folds and dips and crevices and you wanna exaggerate those as much as possible. And remember, this stuff always looks better at night. During the day, all these fake lights on it, it just doesn't look the same. One trick you can do is once you get a lot of your shadowing in and everything else, you wanna come back with skin tones to sort of go over that and clean it back up. That works for paint brushes as well as the airbrush. At this point, there's really only two things left. One is to put the, uh, the thick scab blood on, which I'm not gonna do until I get to the event, so you can see the difference this makes going over some of just these little bloody spots to bring the shine back out, really make them look deep again. It's not like the runny blood is very, very thick. And then dirtying up your teeth. You can get these little things, you, they taste minty, you put them on your teeth to make it look really nasty and moldy and just really gross and it really, really, changes it from this to something totally different. You can really see the difference that the teeth make. And the blood, it just finishes it all off. This blood has been added, it's a drying blood, so it doesn't make as much of a mess. I'll definitely link that and the other bloods in the description below. One thing I'm missing is contacts. Contacts, like whited out contacts, they irritate the hell out of my eyes. If you can stand them, pick up some. They really, really complete the costume with the teeth. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. If you want to see more content next Halloween like this, this is one of the things that is sort of the root of my channel. I did this kind of stuff all the time whenever I first started YouTube. Let me know in the comments below if you don't want to see any more Halloween stuff. Well, you won't until maybe next Halloween. Thanks again, everyone, and see you next time. I'm like a goofy zombie.
silicone, latex. Which do you prefer?